to start off with like my journey here in Kasamahan. And so coming from like East Bay area where there's not really that much of <laughs> where there's not a lot of like representation of Philippine culture as well as like a really big Philippine community. I really did feel lost with like who I am as a person um, and where I identify within my culture. And the one thing that really enticed me about USF was the Filipino community here. And I really was excited to go from high school all the way to USF just because I was really excited and really hopeful for what this space had to offer for me. When I first came into the space of Kasamahan, um, part of my language, but I was scared shitless. <laughs> um, I went to first gen, um, really scared, not knowing anyone. And it was really a hard adjustment for me. Um, but I, in the back of my head, I was just like, give this space a second chance. Give this space a second chance. Because if you quit now, you will never know how you'll never know the outcome of the situation. And I did give it a second chance. I did the Kata program, was about to quit, but I was like, I'm still stuck through it. But then I got picked up into an, a really amazing fan line that really gave me that community that I wanted and the community that I sought out for. And I really owe it to like my West Wing babies for like supporting me throughout like my journey here to Kasamahan. But um, they also helped me like branch out and become more active in the space. I really wasn't like looking forward to like um, being active in the space, but they were just like, do friendship games. Like, it's gonna be fun. And I did, and I really had a blast and I met a lot of my friends there. And when PCN season came around, this is the one part where I was really excited because um, I was a PCN baby, so I did PCNs ever since I was in fifth grade. I actually performed for August for a while before I graduated from the program. And working with them again and dancing with my fellow Kasamas has always been like a dream of mine because I really love Philippine folk dance. I really love dancing. I really love performing. And I was really excited for our show. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we had no show. We had to cut our first year early. And it really sucked because I was really looking forward to performing um, on stage with my friends, my newfound family. And it wasn't until, actually it wasn't until re recently where I started reflecting on my journey with the Kasama Han. And it really just hit me like a truck. Like, I only had two and a half PCNs throughout my whole Kasama Han career. And all of those are now memories. All of those are now memories that I will forever cherish. And it hurts, it sucks, but I'm really grateful for all the memories that came about those two and a half PCN seasons. I met a lot of my best friends there. I met a lot of new friends there. But one thing I will always say to y'all is Take each moment for granted. You will never know the future. You will never know what's gonna, what's the outcome gonna be. Because this time is a privilege. You know, we don't, we can't turn back time, but we can only live in the moment. And knowing now that my PCN performance days are now done with Kasamahan, it really hurts. And it really sucks, but I will cherish every single moment, every single minute that I spent with y'all because PCN has given me that community, and PCN has already given me that newfound family that I was seeking my first year. And so I really want to thank all of y'all for coming into this space, watching our 50th PCN because when I watched the video when Carlene sent it to me this morning, it really brought back a lot of emotions that I wasn't able to feel throughout the season. And I don't know if I was just repressing it because of work or just like overall stress, 
But watching back at the show now, in this current like state, especially with graduation coming up, it made me realize how much I will miss you all and how much I will miss this place. And so make sure every time you are with your loved ones, with your kasamas, with your friends, cherish that moment, live in the moment, because at the end of the day, you will never know where time will take you. Thank you. just thank everyone involved because I never saw myself doing this like ever I literally last minute just signed up for this and boy am I glad I did because every single aspect everything from like rehearsals missing sleep going to wing stop <laughs> or just even the small things the, the little little conversations you have first meeting people everything from the first day I walked into auditions to final show day, my life. I felt this entire thing was life changing. Um, I, I wanna thank everyone involved because y'all did amazing. It was a team effort. I wanna thank, shout out specific people. I wanna shout out James for the opportunity and for you know holding the house down, being able to carry this. I don't know how you did that. I still don't know how you do that, but shout out everyone on you board involved, culture committee, Y'all really pulled that off, and you should be damn proud of yourselves. Um, I want to shout out Christelle and Nolan for coming to our Need for Skit, because y'all really brought that shit like, to another level. And I want to sh shout out Tiara and Sean and the rest of Skit Committee too for also giving me this opportunity and being able to meet all these wonderful people. Um, I want to shout out Kim and Jada as much as I love to annoy all of you, <laughs> Jada, I'm s rehearsals wouldn't have been the same without you. I, if even during like times where we know rehearsals were tough, we were getting up a lot of shit for having our phones up and everything. All I heard about was that our cast was our, was okay, and you really brought the light to rehearsals. Just. Even when things were tense, even if we just came off a cricket screaming scene, I I know I could just go back to you and just mess around. And I know damn sure PTN wouldn't have been the same without you. Um, Kim, I know I joke about how you're a terrible mom in this skit, but like, <laughs> damn, you bring this before off stage. I, I now have someone to rant to, someone to randomly talk to. I couldn't imagine being across anyone else, yelling at anyone else on stage besides you. <laughs> it had to be you. Also the height difference is just makes it like this. Um, I want to shout out Fred for being a stage manager and being, being the dude who yells at everyone, even though the, the, one, the guy that everyone like has to do the job that no one wants to do. Um, and I want to shout out two last people that are very near and dear to my heart. Um, Aaron, you're the brother I never had. And you've been a rock for me, not just throughout this whole thing, but for my entire college experience. And I can't even summarize, no words can ever summarize what I can say about our relationship. So I'm just gonna leave it at friends by chance, brothers by choice, roommates by legally binding contract. <laughs> until May, until May. And speaking of May, Aden, you literally harassed me to audition <laughs> for three weeks at least, non-stop phone calls, until you saw the email that confirmed I had an audition date. The fact that it was us, the fact that we got paired together, not just in Kate, but in Skit, in PCN, the fact that None of, none of this would have been possible without you. And you make me a better person every day. You open up all these opportunities. And I can never thank you enough. And tell you how much I love you. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And lastly, again, y'all put in that fucking work. Y'all put that shit together. You fucking killed it on that stage. And I'm proud of all of you. Carry this legacy on. Y'all are the future of this club, and I 
love you all. Hi everyone, I'm Frances. Um, my pronouns are she, her. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I just want to start off by saying I'm happy that all of you are here. Um, I'm happy that all of you made it out here. Uh, I know it's like in the thick of finals and I know everything seems like a lot right now and there's a lot of like, like, oh, it's the end. Oh, it's, it's like graduation. Oh, it's like we're about to like finish off another school year. But um, because I need this and I, I'm gonna take a wild guess that a lot of you may find this useful. Um, I want you all to take a deep breath real quick. Um, oh, well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading. <laughs> just, 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 just. Okay, well, I, I won't be taking it with you because I'll be counting. <laughs> okay, ready? Deep breath in. One, two, three. Deep breath out. One, two, three. Deep breath in. One, two, three. Deep breath out. Um, I was gonna go a little bit into like my circle sometimes, but I swear I tell it to everyone. <laughs> so it's just, I think if freshman me like got a glimpse into like even a tiny bit of what was gonna happen, like or where I am at this point, I think she'd be like, what? <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> um, but I think. Like, regardless of the past, regardless of the future, or whatever you all have in your heads, um, I want you all to turn to the person next to you. I mean, literally, like right now. <laughs> turn to the person next to you. Give them a little eye contact. If you can, if there's like three of you, split your eye contact like both ways. <laughs> If you're comfortable with a hug, if you're comfortable with a little handshake and a squeeze, um, say I'm happy that you're here. yourself feel these feelings fully and it is only through acknowledging those feelings and like letting yourself feel them that you'll be able to maybe find yourself back um i don't know where i was going with this but i kind of forgot but yeah 
I think one thing I'll leave this off with is there is someone that always told us like something that we've seen in a past senior speech like even before we got here and like something that we heard from like many of the people who graduated before us that like you only get four years in Kasamahan if you're lucky. You only get four years with these people if you're lucky. For us, we our first year got cut off and we only got what is it, like 2.5 years, <laughs> 2.5 years with each other in person. So you never really know what will happen or like what life will throw at you. But one thing you can control is being in the present. So one last time, I want you all to look at each other in the eye because this might be one of the last times you get to experience this feeling and whatever feelings you have right now um, with each other. So let's take like five seconds, look at each other in the eye. <laughs> give him a little hug, give him a little love. <laughs> Kind of funny because I have a very loose relationship with Kasamha. Um, I grew up like northern, up in Washington, and there wasn't like a lot of Filipinos around me. So when I saw that there was such a big Filipino community at USF, I was really excited that I was going to a school with a lot of people that looked like me. Um, and so I think this space is really special for just simply that one fact. Um, and even greater the fact that people share a lot of the same experiences that I have. And I think that space is really invaluable because on my whole four years college journey, I kind of took the time to figure out what I am and what I think I am. And I think I've gotten a decent answer that I seem satisfied with the current me. Um, and I hope you guys find that journey on your own and come to an answer that's a little bit satisfactory, at least in the slightest to you by the end of wherever your college journey is. And I think for me, there's been my pivotal moments in the times I come back to Kusamaha. Um I am like technically the last of my fan line because I never picked up. <laughs> <laughs> but I was adopted into another one. And for that, I'm like ever grateful because that gave me that community and support that I've been craving since I came here. And I think PCN really solidified that community for me. And it's really, I think, if you do nothing else in Kasamaha, PCN should be that one thing that you do. Because there were so many unexpected connections that came about in that experience. And I think, for me, it kind of awoke different passions and interests, especially within our own culture that I was never exposed to and kind of fueled that new desire. So I think to kind of echo people who are a little bit more wise than me and that same message that we kept hearing in PCN, if there's one thing that I really want to impart is that you need to stay curious. You need to, if there's even that little inkling of like, what is Filipino in any aspect that might be, follow that lead. Because in the end, 
you are the defining piece of the culture. Once all those old heads are done and gone, it's just you that's left. And whatever's left in this brain, whatever you learn, that's our legacy. You are the legacy, and you're the one that carries it. And you're the one that imparts it on the next generation and so forth. So I think, for me, curiosity is what drives me, what I gather from Kasamaha. And I think that's something I really want for you guys in your journey, whatever that might be, is even if it doesn't become the main focus of your life, at least keep a little space off to the side, just for you, just for the culture, just so that you remember whatever it is that was special to you, whatever made PCN special to you. So yeah. to be someone else because I knew that the people who I'd met who accept me for who I am and they'll continue to grow with me no matter who it is that I meet in this space whether they're old people I met like years ago or if they're new I know so many of you like have recently just met me literally this semester but just know that I love you I'll always have you in my heart. And I know that as time goes on, and even now, we'll continue, we'll outgrow Kasamahan at some point. But I just know that I'll never outgrow the people who have met you. You'll stay in my history. You'll stay in Kasamahan's history. And although you won't be here for years down the road, just know that when you visit, You'll always find community and you'll always find love because that's what kept me here at Kasamaha. Because someone, some people, <laughs> my first year extended the love um, to me. And that's what my goal was for this year to extend the love to more people, the first years, transfers, everybody who comes into the space. Just know I love you. I know you'll have an amazing time at Kasamahan, at USF, with the people that you meet here. Just know that people will come and go, but always thank them for the great times that they've given you. I love you. <laughs> But if you do know me, I'm glad I met you. Um, Kasamahan, so slippy. It's been four years. I remember my first year being picked up into my fam line, being root sit, and then meeting like all these new people, all these new faces, and being like, wow, these people look like me. Like, damn. Um, I never found a community like this where I grew up. I grew up in Mountain View. I'm jump scared. <laughs> <laughs> I went to St. Francis. Do you know what that is? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No slander, but it was not the place for me. And then I came here, and everyone was so welcoming. 
and everyone wanted to be like, hi, what's your name? And I was like, oh wow, like people are nice. <laughs> and then I guess what kept me coming back to this space was like the constant welcoming faces and like just really people who cared about me and what I was doing. And I barely knew these people. <laughs> like Jalissa, I met her for the first time in varsity, if you know what that is. Um, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I see her and she's at first gen. And I'm like, oh, well, she's in two places. And like, she welcomed me so much into both spaces. And I was like, if this is what all the people are like, I want to be there. And they were, like my ate, Maddie Burke, if you know her, she took such good care of me my freshman year. She was always like, oh, like Tori, like let's hang out, or oh, you have choreo projects for our city, I'm there for you. Like, that's where I found, or Samahan is where I found people who really wanted to support me, and I barely knew them. <laughs> and. It made me want to be like, I want to be that for someone else. And then come PCN 2020, I was like, OMG, I want to do that. I don't know anything about my culture. I did Tinic Bing once my senior year of high school, and I want to learn more. And then I learned more, and then we went home. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, that's so sad. But um, coming back my junior year, and being in PCN, I was like, oh, this is what the magic is. Like, I was like, wow, Christelle and Francis, Pompeo for the Lecon, like, I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Same kill, watching Tyson and Jared, I was like, wow, that's so cool. And I was like, wow, like, this is really what I've been looking for. And I was like, you know what, maybe I want to be more involved in that. So I applied for CC. And then I was like not thinking anything of it because, okay, full disclosure, at first years, I uh, I ran for treasure twice, and then I lost twice. <laughs> but but then I was like, oh, that's sad. Oh well. <laughs> and then I applied for CC, and then James sent me a message like, hey, you're a coach, and I went, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's so fun. And just like, I think once I got that news, I was just so excited to see what this cast would bring. And y'all surprised the F out of me. There was 150 of y'all. Like, I was not expecting that. And y'all showed up to your practices. Y'all put in so much work. Y'all made friends with each other, made relationships. And I was like, this is what the space that I came into was, and here it is again with like almost entirely new people. And I think that's exactly what PCN and Chris Alman brings. Like we learn from the past generations, and yet it's like trickled down from people maybe you guys haven't even met, but like it's here. <laughs> um, I just want to like everything everyone said, like I did know that. Second that, I think that this space is somewhere where maybe sometimes you don't love it, it's okay, you can leave and come back. Or if it is a space that you love, like spend every moment like taking in what the space is giving you and like learning from it, spending time with your friends. Like I forgot who said it, but I think all of you did. We like left <laughs> in the middle of our PCN season. But we came back. We had two more PCNs, y'all. And I'm very glad I spent it with all of you. And like, I met Christelle in my rec class <laughs> freshman year. <laughs> and then they were like, hey, do you want to be at G movies? And then she was like, I was like, okay. And then I did production. <laughs> but it's okay. Hell no. <laughs> but she's still my friend, so everything <laughs> works out. And I hope that I'll still be your guys' friend, even when I'm gone, but I'm not that gone. I'll be here. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, I didn't want to cry, so I just want to say I love y'all. This space, 
is a space that you can come back to, like for real. Like people are here and they care about you, even if they barely know you. Because I feel like I, I really wanted to kind of emphasize that love and care. As a co-chair, I hope I did, but I did really want to show y'all like how much I'm proud of you, how much work y'all put in. Like it's not easy, but y'all did. And it was the damn 58. Did that. But yeah. So I hope you come back. And if you don't, it's okay. But just know we're always here. Yeah. Love y'all. graduating early and so I really appreciate the opportunity to you know, be here and be a part of Kasamahan. Um, I remember a year ago, well, starting before that, I was part of the year that came in during the pandemic. My first year was during COVID and my second year coming to campus for the first time, I originally wasn't supposed to come to USF. I had no idea we had a Filipino club. Back home, I was not really in touch with my culture. We didn't have a Filipino club in my high school. And so coming here was really like a fresh start in what I wanted to learn and the spaces I wanted to get involved in. And in Philly 102 with Lisa Edith, I remember Jewel turning around to me and asking me why I wasn't in PCM that year. And I struggled to find a place at USF. Uh, coming to campus was really hard and finding a community was even harder. I spent a lot of my first semester in my dorm, like many other people have said, and I, didn't really feel connected to a lot of people on campus because I didn't have like that normal first year at USF. And so when Jewel turned around to me and was like, hey, there's like some things that you can get involved in if you still want to. And I was like, sure. <laughs> and she was like, she named all of the things that um, that, were, I, that I could do. And I was like, oh, maybe it's spoken word. I've done spoken word once or twice before. And she was like, okay, well, Kiana is the person in charge of that. I have no idea who Kiana was. And she was like, okay, I'll put you in connect with her on Slack and you can like meet up with her. And so I came in during her office hours and I, started to find someone that brought me into the space that made me feel like I was connected to the culture in some way, shape, or form. And looking back a year ago, I have changed and grown and learned so much because of it. Um, I have an amazing audience that um, I am grateful and I remember a year ago saying I don't feel connected to the term kuya. It feels weird saying some saying ate kiana or kuya because it just didn't feel like something that I can connect with and with all of that said, I think that the importance of Kasamahan being a jumping off space for me. Uh, being able to get involved with NC Casa, with Liana, being able to get involved in Capo Gardens and many of the other spaces that we're a part of is really important to who I am now. And Kasamahan was that first step for me. And for a lot of the first years, I believe that Kasamahan is such a great first step to get involved with so many of the resources and community organizations that we have in the Bay Area and something that I am so indebted to today. And with all of that being said, 
I'm also grateful for Maglalapit, who has become another home away from home for me. And the biggest thing is that all of this was really Tadhana. <laughs> it was really, truly those small things that led up to this. I could not imagine myself a year ago thinking about myself as a kid, wearing a model, standing in front of y'all. I don't even know what I would tell that younger self, but I'm grateful that I'm able to do that today. So, thank you. I, going back and looking back and how I started out, um, I, don't, I think my first sort of like, I, I guess like first gen doesn't really count in my head, but like the first like event event that I was like, for sure like, I was like, in, like I felt like I was actually into someone, ironically was the speed dating event, <laughs> which is like, which is like you ask any of the fourth years, <laughs> that event. It was it, it was an, it, it was a little tough. It was a, it was really tough being in the room with like what was it like how many hundred something two hundred people that was crazy. Um, but I back then had a thing with crowds and I had to take a step out of the room. And out there I met my eventual friends. Um, her name is Mika Ella. She was very involved in the space. She was the one of the cultural directors of the past year. Um, and she she reached out to me, this shy, timid kid in the corner who's just like not like very clearly not fully there. Um, and from then on, that was like my gateway into meeting a bunch of a bunch of different people, getting involved in the space and, and stuff like that. And yeah, I've, I've been here for a long time. I've been here for four years. A year, the entire first year as a member, and then the next three years as an like. like I've been I've been here, um, and I've been asked. You know, there there have been moments when things got tough, and I've been asked like, you know, you know, there's a lot telling you that, you know, like why why are you still here essentially, and and it, it it's fair. Like I've had I've had bad tough days in sport. But, ooh, not gonna cry. I've had a lot of bad days and tough days in this work, but the truth is I've had more good days here than anywhere else, than anywhere else. And being in the space has allowed me to grow into the person that, you know, I've, that apparently I was meant to be. It's given me, like, the people that I've learned to love, it's given me my friends, it's given me my family, and it's given me every single experience that's built up to who we as fourth years are, every experience that we've had in this world has helped us and shaped us into who we are going to be when we step on that stage for graduation. Um, and it's something that I am forever gonna be grateful for. That's, and if, if there's any parting message from me, it's that let, let the space shape you into whoever you are supposed to be. And whatever idea of who you have, whatever idea you have of who, who you are meant to be, just let let whatever change is supposed to happen to you happen. And the person that you are meant to be will just come into fruition, mm -hmm. and it will come in naturally. Um, I am forever grateful to this space. I've talked so many years. I have talked all these years about growth and, and all that. And like I'm, like I'm going to use whatever I've like learned and experienced from here to grow as a person, but I'm never going to outgrow the space, and I'm never going to outgrow the memories that I've had and the people I've learned to love in this space. Um, and, yeah, and I hope I hope uh, the space is able to do that for y'all too. Uh, if you don't.